we're going to show you some incredible results from putting biology and minerals on the seed. This isn't a very long presentation, but I want to give you some potential of what is out there just by working with the fertilizers and the microbes and the minerals. And then we're going to talk real briefly about plants and pathogens so you understand this. And then we're going to talk ever so briefly about plant primary and plant secondary metabolites because this brings this whole thing full circle. In, in what we do, we get to work with soil minerals. And we do that analysis. We look at soil biology, we do that analysis. Then we grow the plant and we look at and we study the plant. Then it's fed to livestock. And at any given time, we have millions of chickens on our probiotics and our minerals and our feed. We have hogs, we have cattle, we have sheep, we have horses. And then we also have food production that goes into the human chain. And so we get to look at every aspect of life at all through the entire food chain. And there is such a dramatic difference between food that is produced without nutrition, that is just biomass and has no flavor, it has no mineral content, to that which is healthy and sustains life. And it doesn't happen just because we grow a plant. It happens only because we understand the mineral involvement, we understand the microbial involvement, and we step back and we allow that incredible divine intelligence that God put into things to do its job. And when that happens, we start to see pretty amazing results. And so this is some of the, this is some of the results that we've seen. So we put in a lot of different groups of microorganisms. We have about 13 different groups, probably upwards of 50 species. We have 85 or more micronized minerals. And then we have food sources for the biology. So we're going to put this on the seed. We have it in both liquid and we have it both in dry. And what it does is it helps with germination and it dramatically will increase yields in good years and bad years. We have microorganisms now that have been harvested out of Yellowstone Park. And the biology was, why are these plants living at 150 degrees? How can they do that? How are these plants surviving at 50 below? And that was the extraction of a group of microorganisms that we now use in dry farming and uh, even irrigated farming that help reduce with the effects of drought, heat, cold, frost, and salt tolerance. That's what these group of microbes do. And they're very, very effective. Uh, we have literally, literally, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dry land acres in the West. And we are now moving these microorganisms into these fields and on these crops and in these farms. There's very small seed treaters that can be very effective at treating large amounts of seed. Seed treatment results in the real world. What we're adding is mycorrhizal fungi. We're adding nitrogen fixing azotobacter. We're adding Pseudomonas, Bacillus, Trichodermis, Penicillium, wonderful groups of microorganisms that continue to protect the plant and feed the plant. So here's some barley that was done by one of our farms up in Montana. They just took regular barley and they seed treated part of it with the biology and the minerals and then they just kept them moist and you can see what rate of germination is happening. It is very common for us to plant barley and have it up germinated in three to four days with four inches of growth in a week. Oftentimes the untreated barley won't be out of the ground for a week or longer. Here's one of the farms that sent us a picture of their wheat plants and this was why they said this is why we seed treat. Here is a uh, corn trial that was done in the Midwest in uh, by a company called Byron Seed. This is their publication. We sent some tr seed treatment back. But what I want to show you here, the results of the treated side was the surviving population in the first field. And they did five separate trials, 31,000, 30, 32, 33, and 29,000. They averaged about 31,000. These fields yielded 500, or 254 bushel an acre. The untreated side of the field 
had a way lower survival plant rate and yielded 217 bushel. And so at $4.20 corn, this increased the revenue to the farm about $157. This was sold for $12 an acre. Here's a silage field where one part is treated, one part is not. You can get a really good look at the difference in the corn plants between the two. And then also we took the ears, the stalk, the height, the length, the kernels, the count, and you could just compare the two. Root size, root mass, um, dramatically different with the assistance of the microorganisms. Here again in Nebraska, we're able to produce over 10 ton of alfalfa per field. This is irrigated. We have our wheat fields in Montana. We are now pushing close to five inch heads. You can see every year this gets better from 12 to 13 to 14 to 15. Our heads are getting bigger, they're getting longer, the soils have become my, more microbially dominated and life going back into the soil. I was up in Montana this spring and I wanted to share this with you. They got, up around Great Falls area, they got over four inches of rain in four days. And the rivers were flooding, the roads were flooding, towns were flooding, entire communities were closed. As I drove to our farms, I could see river of top silt, topsoil and silt running down these fields. When I got to our farms that had been using this program for five years, there was absolutely no runoff coming off any of their fields. They scarcely had a puddle of water in the ravines. Their farms were soaking up the water and retaining it as moisture while the other farms had compaction and it was running off. This, this is dry land wheat near Billings, Montana. And we took and looked at the untreated side of the seed and we looked at the treated side of the seed. You can tell which one is massively larger in root and stem size. These are the heads from the dry land wheat. This crop yielded almost 100 bushel per acre dry land. These are the untreated heads and another section of the farm that did not use our products. You can see this was a picture they sent me of the untreated heads and the treated heads. This is another farm over in a different part of Montana on chickpeas. To the left are the untreated roots, to the right are the treated roots. This is a field that was sprayed with a foliar of microbes and minerals and you can see the difference in growth size. This is the farm with the 9,000 gallon brewer. Here's this young man by the truck. These are sunflowers that were seed treated. A year ago, I sent dry seed treatment up to put on their corn, their dry land corn for the dairy off of this large colony farm. And we doubled their corn production for silage. This year, Abe took and the leftover dry seed treatment for the corn and put it on the sunflowers. And then he stabilized some phosphate with one of our biological products that stops the phosphate from tying up in the soil. And that's all he did to these plants. This field is an exceptional example of stabilized nutrition and microorganisms working together. Typical yield on sunflowers in this area is about 500 pounds per acre. Abe was able to yield over 2,000 pounds per acre when you consider the factors of bird damage and the harvest loss 
to their combines. And so again, you see the potential of having these, these microorganisms converting nutrition into your plants all season long. We use chlorophyll meters so that we can check the chlorophyll and the bricks. And by the way, 23.2 bricks on Durham wheat is exceptional. It is off the charts. And here's one at 619. Here's one at 647. This is your chlorophyll becomes your plant production mechanism. Here again is your lentils. Roots are perfectly clean. Excellent uh, nodules forming nitrogen already. 